In today's video, I am so excited that you decided to stop by because I have several Dollar Tree fall DIYs that you're not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa. I am so grateful and happy to have you here where I love to do all things crafty on a budget. And I also love to bring you guys hauls and just items that I find to craft with. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around, click that red subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and let's jump into today's video. first DIY, you're going to take a few different pumpkins that I got from Dollar Tree. This is the thankful and blessed one, the mini pumpkin that is the paint your own pumpkin, and then kind of like that medium sized decorative one. I start by just taking all of the embellishments off of them. Now the leaf was a little tricky to get off the bigger pumpkin, so I did just take my putty knife and kind of slide that under the glue and remove that and then I removed all the raffia bows and the jute hangers. Next I had a few different pieces of scrapbook paper to choose from but I ultimately decided on this bigger black and white buffalo check so I traced out that pumpkin, cut it out, and then I used my disappearing purple glue stick to glue that down to the surface. Once I laid it down onto my pumpkin, onto the back of the pumpkin, I should say, I made sure to smooth that out really, really nicely before moving on to the next step. Next, I give this middle pumpkin a distressed coat of my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint, and while the paint is still wet, I take a little bit of my gel stain, and I just kind of brush some of that stain in the pumpkin to make it look like real wood. For the last pumpkin, I do the exact same thing I did with the orange pumpkin. So I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then while that paint is still wet, I go in with that gel stain once again. For the middle pumpkin, I had this transfer from last year. You can see that it is well loved. That's why I keep telling you guys, if you see transfers that you love, grab them. That way you have them to, for years to come because they are reusable upwards of I don't even know, but lots of times, as long as you take care of them. So I laid that out on my middle pumpkin. I marked where the wording would be, taped that off with my painter's tape. And then at first I was gonna give it a distress coat. Y'all know how I do, but some of that orange was still showing through and like mixing with the white. So I did just give it a nice thick coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once that was dry and I took the paint off, then I pulled out my burlap. I measured out a piece for that middle piece where, the, where we just painted it white and then cut that down to size. Once I was satisfied with the sizing of my burlap, then I went in with my transfer and my chalk couture ink. I actually got questions about this in my last video. So we do have ink, which is permanent. And then we also have paste, which is removable. So here, because we're using burlap, it's a fabric. I was really nervous to do this because the burlap is, has all those really, really tiny hairs. Um, but it washed right off, it was no big deal. And I did not speed this up because I just wanted to show you guys that I always take my time when I am chalking. It looks like I'm going pretty fast because I speed it up, but I do take my time to not press too hard, get my paste nice and evenly spread. And then before I go like ripping off my transfer, you're gonna see here in a minute that I very carefully pull it up to make sure that all of the ink has went through the transfer. And you're gonna see that it did not. So I just lay my transfer right back down and then I go a little bit more heavy handed. But at first, especially with black paste, 
you definitely want to go very light handed make sure your paste is stirred and when you pull it up make sure that you pull it up nice and slowly that way you can eliminate bleeding so once I figured out that it needed more ink, I went in heavy handed, like I said, pulled that up. And although you cannot, although it's a little bit distressed, I personally like the way that that looks. So I let that dry really well and then glued that down to that middle part. And then I further distressed that white little pumpkin with my mini chip brush and that same gel stain. I also had this piece of poplar in my stash, so it was just a, a scrap wood, and I also stained that piece and then set it aside to dry. I took my jute from Dollar Tree, glued it to the back of the middle pumpkin, and then wrapped it around that stem a couple times, and then glued it to the back. And then I also made a simple um, buffalo check bow. If you guys need to learn how to make a bow, I will leave that in the cards in the right hand corner. So I just glued that down to the middle pumpkin on top of the jute. And then for the bigger pumpkin, I did the exact same thing with the jute. And then I made a triple finger jute bow which like I said, that video that I linked in the cards, so that's where you can find the finger bow trick. Then I took that raffia that we originally took off of the bigger pumpkin, glued that down to the jute we wrapped around the stem, and then glued the triple jute bow down to the raffia bow. Hopefully you guys caught that. I know that was really long winded. So moving on, now it's time to glue everything together. So I take the middle pumpkin, I kind of lean it up against the bigger one to make sure that I like the placement, glue that down and do the same thing with the smaller pumpkin. Next, I take the leaf that we took off the bigger pumpkin and I just kind of dry brush some of that gel stain all the way around the leaf to give it some distressing and make it look a little bit old and weathered glue that down to the smaller pumpkin. And then last but not least, I glued all of the pumpkins to that uh, scrap wood that we stained. And then to uh, stand this up and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere, all I did was glue three Jenga blocks to the back. Now to finish this off, I realized that some of my scrapbook paper was hanging over the edge and it was driving me nuts. My OCD did not like it, so I just sanded off that excess. Next, I took some lamb's ear that I got from Walmart. That is my favorite place to get florals. And I kind of measured it out for the bottom. Um, now, when you get these from Walmart, you get two picks for the price of one, if that makes sense. So I just kind of pulled them apart and then measured them, cut them down, and then glued them in opposite directions down to the bottom. Now the reason I wrap it with wire is because lamb's ear is has that like hair on it and sometimes the glue doesn't stick very well. So I like to like wrap them together with wire first and then glue that down to the bottom middle. And then last but not least, I made a simple little bow I wrapped some jute around the middle and then glued that down to the bottom. And look how cute this is, you guys. I absolutely love the way that the Hello Pumpkin looks against that burlap and then how all of them sit so nicely together. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one. Moving on to DIY number two, y'all, these were so simple and easy to make. So I took three jars that I got from Dollar Tree and I took the stickers off the bottom. Now these were so annoying. So I took my blow dryer to heat up that sticker so that they could easily come off. And then I took off the tops of the jars, glued the rings down to the middle part. I forget what they're called. And then I spray painted them with my hammered Rust-Oleum spray paint. And I was just showing you guys, I love those spray paint handles. It makes spray painting so, so much easier. So I definitely recommend those. I can throw one in my Amazon shop for you. 
But next, I paint the jars, one of them with my Moss Waverly chalk paint, white Waverly chalk paint, and then the last one, I made a mix of white and pumpkin. Now, I did use the pumpkin in the last project, and I, I did use it last video, but I'm just feeling like it's just a little too bright for me. So I did just tone that down a little bit and then painted that last pumpkin with that mixture. Last pumpkin. <laughs> I painted the last jar with that mixture. Y'all know me, I hit them with the blow dryer because I'm way too impatient to sit there and watch paint dry. And then I also used my finger sander once they, once they were completely dry to distress them. Now, I, there was there is no like specific way I do this. I just kind of randomly, um, you know, sand spots. And when my eyes are happy, then I stop. If you don't like it, then you can totally leave that step out. However, I'm not really too sure how your lights would glow if you don't distress it. Um, You'll see at the end that they're not perfectly covered, which I personally like, but if you like them to be a solid, solid color when the lights are in there, except for wherever you distress, then I definitely recommend to do at least three to four coats of paint. Once I was done with the sanding distressing, then I used my chip brush and my gel stain and further distress them. That way, like during the daytime, you could still really see that distressing. And then I took these fairy lights that I got from Amazon. I can also link them in my Amazon shop in the description box below. And I just make sure that all of them work first and foremost and then unwrap them, stick them in the jars, and then glue them to the back of the jar, making sure that the screw part of the battery pack of the lights is facing towards you. That way, if your batteries um, die, then you can change them really easily. Next, I grab my lids because they were finally dry, and I just take a little tiny brush, and once again, that gel stain, and I just randomly dry brush spots here and there. I really wanted these, um, the lids to really look like dirty and old and weathered. I just love that look for fall. So I really went heavily in the front and then I repeated that step for all of them and I also dry brushed them with my mini chip brush and that same gel stain. I then pulled out those little uh, wood pieces that we hauled last week. I can link that haul in the right hand corner. And I just pick out some of those stems. Now they were a little bit too long. My miter shears would not cut through these because it's like solid, solid wood. Uh, so I pulled out my mini miter saw once again, linked in my Amazon shop, and I just cut those down to uh, the size that I liked and then glued those to the middle of the lids of the jars. Next, I go in with the jute once again and wrap that around the neck of the jars, hot gluing that so it doesn't go anywhere, repeating that step for the orange and the moss color. And then for the white jar, I tied a piece of buffalo check ribbon because we're kind of we're going to kind of do reverse. So for the orange and moss color, like I said, we wrapped the jute around and then I made two bows with the buffalo check and glued those to the middle. And then for the white one, I wrapped um, buffalo check around the neck and then glued a jute bow to the middle. And that was it, you guys. I was going to embellish these and put like different stuff on them, but I was just really digging the plain look of them. Um, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Would you have embellished them more or do you like them plain? Um, I also really love them lit up at night. I know some people might not like you know, that streaky paint look, but I personally do. So once again, let me know down in the comments if you guys like them more during the day with embellishments at night, etc. Okay. 
Okay, friends. Now, this one is so easy. You could do this in your sleep. I take this jar from Dollar Tree. It reminded me of a pumpkin the second I saw it. So I picked up several of these for this season. I have several ideas for these. So for this idea, I take the sticker off the bottom and then take some uh, of this finished moss and put some in the bottom of the jar. I then take another strand, another strand of those lights from Amazon and I just put some of the lights down and then I also use a dowel to kind of move everything around in place because this is a odd shaped jar and I just kind of layer it, the moss, the lights, the moss, the lights. Um, and then once I get to the top, I kind of push that battery pack over the side of the jar. And then I also throw some pine cones in there just to make it look nice and festive and decorative. Next, once again, I wrap some jute around the neck of the jar. I glue the battery pack down and then I take a bigger a piece of those little wood pieces from Dollar Tree and glue that down to the lid. Next, I take these berries that I got last year um, at fall time from Dollar Tree and I just wrap it around the front, twist it in the back, and then kind of pull it towards the front. And then I take a paintbrush on either side of the berries and wrap the berries around so you kind of have like a nice little curly cue. And then I also had this metal pumpkin in my stash from Dollar Tree from last year. So I took the raffia bow off of it, glued that to the middle of the jar. And then I also took the leaves off of um, the pumpkin as well. Now I did have to cut those off with my wire cutters and they were a little bit tricky to glue down to this metal top but with a little bit of patience I got them to glue down just fine and y'all I absolutely love this jar. I keep showing Mark and my friend like look I just love this jar. I don't know what it is about it but I love this thing so much so let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Okay, friends, moving on to the last DIY. If you guys are still around, you guys are the best. So I was just showing you, showing you that you can use the smaller crates or the bigger crates. Now, I personally like the bigger closed ones, but if the smaller ones are all you can find, that's totally fine. So I lost the footage, but all I did was glue them together together paint them white and then distress them really nicely. Y'all know how I do. And then I took these one inch square dowels that I had in my stash from making my son these canvases. Um, I had bought a bunch of them and I bought too many. So anyway, what better to do than craft with my dear? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I glue, I cut those down to size. We're going to make an, another stand if you guys have not figured that out. Um, I recently made a bumblebee stand back in, you know, for summer decor. So I can link that in the cards as well. And if I forget, you guys, look, I have so much going on. If I forget, just let me know in the comments and I'll do it. But anyway... I cut them down to size with my saw. It's linked in my Amazon shop in the description box. I glue those down to each corner with my wood glue and some hot glue and then paint them with white and distress it so that it matches. Next, I pull out two of these um, metal pieces from Dollar Tree in the copper color and I also kind of lean that up to my stand and bend it where I would like my awning to be. Now this is personal preference. If you like it a little bit longer to the front or whatever the case may be, you can bend your pieces as short or whatever as you like, if that makes sense. So um, I did mine about three or four curves down. And I did that to two pieces, like I said, and then lined them up to fit the awning and then glued it down with some hot glue. Now I'm going to tell you guys, definitely use some super glue. You're going to see here in a little bit that I do have clamps on them because I did end up having to super glue it. So don't make the same mistake I did. 
um, because I have a mess of hot glue that looks like crap, but we covered it, so don't even worry about it. So as you could see there that I drilled holes in the back of our dowels, and then I also attached our roof piece with some wood screws that I also got from Amazon. And then now we're gonna work on all the little embellishments. So I take this um, fabric, yeah, it's fabric, Melissa. <laughs> pregnancy brain is a real thing you guys like whoa it's serious around here but anyway I take this fabric that I actually got last year once again from Dollar Tree it is this cute little orange and white buffalo check and I cut a piece off and then cut triangles cut another piece of jute and then I glue my triangles to the jute. Now the easiest possible way I found to do this was to glue the edge of your little triangle and then lay your jute on top of that. And then my squeegee, y'all, I love my squeegee from my chalk couture for um, drying hot glue and not burning your fingers. It's absolutely amazing. So dual purpose there. And then obviously I glued that to the top inside of my little awning or whatever you want to call this pumpkin stand now i wanted to make little decorations so i took out these little chalkboards from dollar tree and i also took out my um, tiered tray stencil from chalk couture i can leave all the um, chalk couture products that are in my shop that i can link i will link for you guys all in one link you can add and subtract from that um, link as you like it'll just um, take you to a cart and then you can you know like I said add or some add or subtract so I take the farm fresh and I transfer that on with my white chalk paste onto one of the little mini chalkboards and then for the second one I took the pumpkins and transferred that on i also wanted to mention you guys can now text me at 302-204-0881 the word chalk couture if you guys want more info on the 40 percent discount on all the items that you guys can now get for kind of like a cricket access so anyway just text me i'll give you guys the info and then once i was done with the little signs then i went to the front of this pulled out this pumpkin patch transfer. This is a really old transfer, I believe. I don't know. Don't quote me, but I know it's at least a couple years old. Um, but again, I have a lot in my stash, so I love to mix and match them. That's the beauty of DIY and using your favorite medium is you can do it how you like. And with Chalk Couture, they're reusable, so I, I'll have them like forever. So anyway, <laughs> once I was done with the wording, then I transferred on those pumpkins and the stems, which also came from the exact same transfer. Um, it was a huge one, and E size is 24 by 18. So it had a bunch of fall like embell embellishments for the truck. But anyway, now I'm just rambling. <laughs> so once I was done my transfers, then obviously you saw I cut more pieces of square dowels because it was kind of like caving in in the middle, which I had a feeling was going to happen. But um, anyway, it's no big deal because I added it. So I cut two pieces to go on the e on the other sides of the crates on the inside, cut those down, painted them white, distressed them, and then glued those down to give that more stability on the inside and then like i said the roof had a little bit of glue that i was not liking i tried to cut it off but then the roof was like trying to come apart and oh my goodness you guys it was a mess so plan b was to just cover it up with something and i actually love this way more so it was like a happy mistake so don't ever get on yourself for mistakes because it might turn out way better in the end anyway so i had this in my stash from last year and it came from the hanging um the hanging shelves from dollar tree that i made another shelf out of and i kept the um, jute in my stash so I just glued that down to all of the edges and wherever the two metal pieces met 
and then I just embellish the inside, you guys. I absolutely love this little stand. Let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. I don't know, you guys. I really love this stand, but that pumpkin I was talking about, I just really love it too. So I don't know. I can never pick a favorite. Y'all let me know. I'm so excited for fall, and I know you guys are too. Let me know what kind of fall DIYs you want to see. I can't wait to get into Halloween. Are y'all ready for Halloween DIYs? I was thinking like Halloween comes before like Thanksgiving and stuff. So I don't know. I'm ready for Halloween DIYs. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments. As always, if nobody has told you today, you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. I would love if you would stick around, become part of my crafty family by just clicking that red subscribe button. Share this video out. I have a big goal of getting to 100K by the time my baby boy is born in October, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. So share this out, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, do all the YouTube-y things. And like I said, y'all are gorgeous. You're amazing. You can literally do anything you set your mind to. So don't forget it. Also, if you guys need any chalk couture info or if you need any ketone info, how I recently just lost 60 pounds prior to my pregnancy, text me at this number, the word ketone or the word chalk couture, and I'll get that info to you. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I love y'all so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.